This is the Vancouver Playhouse, the theatrical venue that's part of the same complex as the Queen Elizabeth Theatre. And we're looking at the Tony Onley mural, first created in 1961-62, installed in 62-63. At the time it was installed, letters were written to the editor complaining that this was part of a communist conspiracy to uglify the world, and I'm quoting there, People complained about the exorbitant fee of $4,000 the artist has paid. In fact, this is an extension of the canvas-on-canvas collages that first brought celebrity to Tony Onley. He had returned to Vancouver after sojourning in Mexico at the art school in San Miguel Allende with a body of work, most of which were the canvas-on-canvas collages. The story goes that one dark night of the soul, Tony despairingly cut up a large body of his work, and looking down he, at the results of several years in pieces on the floor, he began to see patterns. The series that Tony returned to Vancouver with was recognized as something spectacular. He immediately had an exhibition at the Vancouver Art Gallery, and a couple of pieces from this series wound up in the Tate Modern in London. They're minimalist and simple. I had read about this collage in Tony Onley's autobiography, Flying Colors, and thought it'd be worthwhile to take a look. The work was in exactly the same place where the artist had installed it in 1962. There had been a bar directly underneath with the results of a beverage service on the lower parts of the collage. As well, the collage had been uh, absorbing decades of tobacco smoke during thousands of intermissions. Our inspection of this work coincided with a major renovation job at the Playhouse. The contractors were uh, sawing the building in half to create an acoustic separation between the two venues. Andrew Todd, the conservator, re recruited the workmen for something a little more delicate than they're typically used to. As Andrew comes past us, this will be the first time that, since the collage was installed that we can see the true colors, the colors of Mexico. My theory is that the work was constructed uh, off-site, then uh, completed on-site. Okay, by the time they're uh, checking out the fire alarms here, the acoustic separation is being completed. So what I'm doing here actually is trying to remove some of the white latex paint that actually was spilled onto the painting while the areas around it were getting repainted. So this is not original to uh, Tony Onley's technique, but uh, it's a very strong visual uh, appearance. And it, since it mimics some of the things that he actually did, such as this drip, which is the hand of the artist, it's important to remove it so it's not mistaken um, as being part of his work. And so I'm just carefully scalpel cleaning all of the excess uh, acrylic latex paint that was painted on by accident. Uh, this is kind of the final phase of cleaning the surface of the painting. We've already uh, tried several different methods of dry cleaning, so no moisture at all was applied to the surface. And we've used uh, brush vacuuming and eraser cleaning and also cleaning with a material called broomstick. Uh, which is a molecular trap. It's basically a very sticky piece of uh, a rubber-like material that grabs all of the surface dirt. Um, but there's a lot of material that's kind of embedded in the surface, and what I'm doing now is gently removing as much of the uh, remaining surface dirt as possible. So I'm really just using a very gentle method with um, warm distilled water uh, and a barely damp swab. So basically I make a swab with cotton, I dab out as much of the water as possible, and then I just rub gently on the surface, and that picks up quite a bit of dirt. It's not a huge difference, but that's not something that we want. We actually want to try and make the surface look 
even and cleaner, but we're not going for a scrubbed look. Uh, and also, one of the most important parts of this painting is the adhesive um, that the artist used as part of his technique. All these pieces that are uh, glued onto the surface, collaged onto the surface, were applied with uh, quite a shiny adhesive that may be Roplex and acrylic resin, or acrylic dispersion rather. And you can see the brush marks where he applied that uh, adhesive, and it's used not only to just attach the pieces, but they're very much a strong design and decorative element. And that is very sensitive to water, and so we have to kind of check to see where those areas are and clean around them, because we'll basically uh, deal with those separately because they're so much more sensitive to our cleaning. Uh, what we've been doing is comparing the painting as it is now and uh, looking at the images of the painting when it was first installed. And what we noticed is this whole area here, um, which looks in some ways similar to his technique, but not really that much. Uh, we were wondering if that was something that happened after the painting was installed, because the 1962 photos don't show this area at all. Uh, and while the 1962 photos are black and white, um, you can get a sense that pretty much all of the colors are visible on that image. So this uh, yellow is really visible, but there's absolutely nothing here. It's just a stark white area. And so we have sort of two competing theories. One is that maybe it was damaged in this area or there was a spill or something that happened because there was a bar uh, underneath this painting. And maybe the artist came back and reworked this area so it looked a little bit more like it uh, worked with the rest of the painting. Or maybe it was just a terrible spill and someone came along and tried to sort of clean it up or even it out. Uh, in any case, we're finding, especially along the bottom of this painting, a lot of staining from uh, what seems to be red wine and possibly Coca-Cola or other things. Um, they're, they're very <laughs> sticky and bright red orange, and they're very easy to remove for the most part, which is a good thing. Um, but what we've decided to do is, until we really know the story of this patch, and it's unclear whether that'll ever be known, um, we leave this very large area, but where it's clear that they seem like spills and, and not drips like the ones that he has, and often his drips start quite high on the painting and will continue all the way down. These more are, are like blobs, and as I said, they're quite easy to remove, and since they're not in the original painting, we've decided to at least take them back so they're not as visually uh, disturbing, um, and leave this mystery for later, and perhaps just highlight it to the Playhouse going audience because it's kind of a funny and interesting story. Um, other staining that you see all along the bottom here seems to be related to problems with the stretcher bar which is right behind it and some metal attachments which are also behind it. And they look like um, maybe the canvas got slightly damp at some point and these are just tannins from the wood or maybe some kind of metal staining. And since that really wasn't there in the original um, images of the installation, we're going to try and reduce those as much as possible because they're right on raw canvas and they're quite visually disturbing. And they follow all the way down to uh, Tony Only's signature, so uh, we'll be trying to reduce those as much as possible. And we're just starting work on that. After a few months of careful cleaning, the work is ready to be rehung. Brighter, fresher. And I imagine when the artist installed, he may have had a similar configuration of helpers and friends helping get the work in place. The collage now has a backing on it, it's being cleaned as well, it's no longer hanging on a cinder block. It's a treasure that's being rescued.